Welcome back to Coffee with Ken, but Ken, Ken's here, he's here, <laughs> and, but, and we have no coffee, but we have been in Houston because we just got done with First Steps to Success. Hi, I'm Jackie with Destiny Global, and of course, this is my amazing bride, Miss Carmen O'Quinn. Hola. I want to tell you, this past weekend, coming out of First Steps to Success, the things that we saw was incredible. The breakthrough happening the changes in people's lives, the stories, people paying off debt. It was absolutely unreal. If you get a chance to join us at a first step success in the future, you want to make certain you do that. But there was something. This, is, this was a first. We did something. In 30 years of first step success events, this has never happened before. But we did something special, Ms. Carmen O'Quinn. Why don't you tell us what happened? Well, if you caught last week's episode of Coffee with Ken, you heard us kind of hinting at it, talking about it, you, you, see, you would have seen that we had one of our kidpreneurs on there, Aidan O'Quinn, where he was talking about we have had this whole rising of kidpreneurs coming through the events, kids from the age of 18 up to 22 who are sitting inside of the events that have been going on for more than 30 years, normally equipping adults. But these kids uh, have been sitting and learning, and we had 15 of them that launched businesses, started businesses, and in Houston, we actually kicked it off on Thursday night where we all met before every event that we, every first steps on Thursday night, we meet in the ballroom with all the next gen, and we have a teaching that is specific to their age and their level, and it's teaching them life skills on how to succeed. And so on Thursday night, they were able to show their stuff, show their products, show it off, talk about all the things. In fact, I think we have a clip of that. It was incredible. So just being able to see what all the different products, like we had Smile merch, <laughs> we had... I mean, it was really interesting to see what all the different kids had come up with. And, and she had gave them some guidance on, you know, sort of basically what to look for, to have a product, to be able to build a business. I mean, where else are people helping young kids? I love the kidpreneur. Where else are people helping young kids be able to accomplish this, uh, start a business and give them some guidance on what to do and help them understand the cost and the profit? And yes. then... Being able to be in this environment where there's so many of adults who want to support young people and being able to see, the, the, and listen, I think the thing that blew me away is I, you would think you'd see a bunch of adults that were like giving charity, but no, like these kids had really neat stuff and it was really cool to be able to see the, the adults coming in and, and supporting and the confidence that it gave the kids. Well, yeah, and these kids, they not only attend the kid, the next generation part, but these kids sit through the entire event with their families, some of their siblings, and so it's families growing together, and so we continued on with First Steps, where, of course, there was hundreds of people that had gathered, whether it was in person or virtually, but Saturday night on day two of the event is when we officially kicked off the Kidpreneur Marketplace, the Next Gen Marketplace, and this is where 15 of them out in the foyer right outside of the ball room. They had their own boots. They had all their stuff displayed. They had practiced their smiles. They had rehearsed what to say to the clients. And what was so cool was not only to see how excited the kidpreneurs were, like these future leaders, these future, uh, for some of them, like Anthony, who started his own vending machine business last year, He's already said, I'm going to become the first millionaire in my family. So it was not only neat to see how excited they were, but how the clients rallied around them. And the clients went out and they, you know, they were buying the stuff, the, whether it was a whip or whether it was the homemade beeswax chapstick or the nature art or the soap or the jewelry or snacks. We had snacks. We had crocheted items. And it was just really crazy to see. I think it's inspirational, even to see young people. As an adult, you know, yeah. as an entrepreneur myself, you know, I've always wanted to, I mean, if I see a young person selling cookies in front of the grocery store and they're actively trying to make the sale, I can't help but want to help them, you know, or at least talk to them, encourage them, and of course, probably buy some cookies that I might not need. But <laughs> then to be able to see these kids, it, it was just inspirational because that was taking it to a whole nother level. Well, and when you watch the clip, did you see all the smiles? Oh. I mean, the smiles from the clients, the smiles from the kids, and then some of the kids on their table, they had like a tip jar, and if anybody wanted to donate their change, all that extra went to, uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute, King's Ransom Hope for Honduras. Many of the kids sold out on Saturday night, 
They sold out of all their product, but Sunday morning, for those that still had inventory left, they were able to set up their booths, and before the event opened, when people were getting in line and they were chit-chatting and getting their morning coffee, they were set up. And there was just, you said the perfect word, there was like this inspirational buzz in the foyer. And I don't know where else in the world that we live in with so much negativity and so much happening and so many people who need inspiration and who are broken, where you can go to a place and your very soul, your very spirit can be uplifted. And I don't think there was not one person in the room that wasn't inspired. And the best part was, is not even, like we had plenty of kids that hadn't launched businesses. You could see their wheels turning. So even the kids that were in the room that hadn't started businesses, that you could see them going, wow, this kid did this and this kid did that. What could I do? I I think there were some adults that were thinking the same thing, quite honestly. And I want to say this. First Step Success obviously isn't all about the kids. It's just that this was such a big deal because it was the very first time we had done this. Um, And and if you're thinking, oh, I want my kid to be a part of that. You know, I want my grandchild to be a part of that. Just so you know, there's no announcement yet to do that again. This was a bit of a test market, but it went really well. So in all likelihood, there may be something else coming up in the future. Stay plugged into this Facebook page and so you can, you know, keep an eye out on what's happening. But... I just want to cover this. It's fascinating. It was a really genius idea that you had on how the kids got their booths and how that whole process worked. Because we didn't expect the kids to go pay for, you know, a booth rent like they would do it like a bazaar or a home show or whatever. How did that work? Yeah, so... uh At Destiny Global, First Steps to Success, a portion of every ticket sale, every ticket that comes in, a portion of that goes directly off the top to King's Ransom Foundation, which is supporting the orphan, the widow, the extreme poor here in the U.S. and abroad. And so one of the things that we had partnered with was Hope for Honduras. We had a chance to go to Honduras last year and see the need and see these kids living in shacks, like literally right next to the road. And so what we decided to do was have the, instead of the kids paying a booth rent, was 10% of all of their profits on Sunday, they got to come in Sunday afternoon, they got to write down their business name, how much money they made, and then what they were able to donate. And there was thousands of dollars that was raised for Hope for Honduras and the smile as they marched in proudly with their envelope, knowing that not only many of them had just launched their first business, they had just made their first money, their first profit, but for many of them, they had just ma- they knew that they had made a difference in someone else's life. I think the best part is just the confidence that they had all the way around, to be able to pull yeah. it off and to be able to, you know, in an environment that's so encouraging. Of course, you guided and directed, but then they were actually, they saw the whole process even to sell happen. Yeah. And then they didn't have to worry about, you know, Paying up front, it was just 10% of whatever they basically sold. Yeah. I think that's incredible. But our very next event. Yes. It's going to be our last event of the year. So if you've ever heard Coffee with Ken or any you know any success tips or you heard anything about First Step Success, you're like, I think I want to check that out one day. What is that all about? This is your last chance in 2024. And the last event is always a little bit special because the last event is all about getting yourself prepared for next year. All too often, January, everybody's like, oh, I want to make more money. I want to pay off (laughs) debt. You know, the the holidays are over. But I always say, we always say that you're either going to go into the new year with momentum or you're going to be starting to have to build momentum in the new year. And it's always better to go into the new year with momentum. So if you want to go to First Step Success, this last event is going to be your next best shot. And it's the last chance of the year. So you want to give those dates and locations? Because this is someplace we haven't been in a really long time. A long time. And listen, this is your last chance until 2025, the January of 2025. And so... Wait a minute, I want to say something. If you're on the fence and you're like, oh, I I feel like, you know, I need to get my pennies, nickels, and dimes right. I understand that. That's always a consideration. But what's going to happen to your life if you keep waiting What's the cost to keep, how long have you been watching these videos waiting to take action? Or waiting for it to come to their town, their city, their neck that, of the woods. That's what I was going to say. People are like, oh, well, I'll wait till it comes local to me. We, we probably are not going to go. Listen, where we're going can be considered a more rural state, but we're probably not going to go to Wyoming or Iowa anytime soon, for example. I mean, we, we just don't. And in this day and age, hopping on an airplane 
I mean, in less than five hours, you're anywhere in the U.S., in the continental U.S. anyway. So if it's in the U.S., it's local. So the next event, who knows, maybe we're international, who knows? But if you've been thinking about it ever, or you're like, I want to check this out, this is the event. This is the event. So your last chance, 2024, to meet us in person in a ballroom where you can learn the strategies. Like we, our clients just learned in Houston how to pay off your debt, how to grow your business, how to start a business, how to get a raise on your job, how to become the most recommended person it is at what you do. Your last chance for the year is going to be September 12th, 13th, and 14th in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are coming back to the East Coast. We have not been to North Carolina in almost 20 years. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a blast. It is going to it is going to be a very special event. We're bringing back some really great content that we haven't done in a while. And wait a minute, wait a minute. They actually get to meet Mr. Kim Brown in person. Yes. Instead of <laughs> there. And Miss Brown. And Miss Dr. Ava Brown, yes. yes. So make sure to grab your ticket. We will post the link down below. Thank you for watching. If you missed last week's episode where we talked to Mr. Aiden O'Quinn, one of our young kidpreneurs, make sure to check that out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.